Hi, this is Ray and this is a game in retrospective and today we're going to be playing King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. Now interestingly, this was just originally known as King's Quest 1 uh, when it first released in 1983, uh, which was the year of my birthday. Um, and yeah, it, it's originally, it was Sierra's original take of the adventure game. It was the first game to put Ken and Roberta Williams on the map and... Uh, it's quite interesting to sort of come back to this and just look at the art style and see how far the point-and-click adventure has come. I mean, you may have noticed that my uh, my point is actually just stuck on the top of the screen there. I'm not actually using my mouse for anything at all. This is all keyboard action. I'm, I'm typing in there with, with the commands. I'm using the arrow keys to move Graham around. Um, yeah, and this this is this was the original take on the adventure game, which. Uh, you know, you, you see today with, with stuff like The Walking Dead and uh, The Wolf Among Us and uh, The Tales of the Borderlands coming soon. So it's quite interesting to see the route to this. Uh, another frustrating issue, as you just saw then, is the pathing issues in these games were really, really particular. Um, you had to literally navigate to the point, the exact point, and uh, yeah, that could result in death as well, which is something that's uh, quite prevalent in the old original Sierra games. Um, there was a lot of random enemies that would pop up from the screen which would attack you and kill you straight away if they caught you. Um, if you slightly walked the wrong direction and you fell, like for example this tree that we're about to climb here. If you, uh, when you're walking along the branches, if you actually move slightly to the left or slightly to the right wrong, you can fall off and just smash into the ground. I think I don't think you die if you fall off this tree. So this perhaps isn't the best example, but there are some things in the game if you fall from a certain height you will die. And you'll have to either restore your save game or restart the game entirely, which uh, for those well, when I was younger I wasn't very uh, wasn't very good at saving saving my games. So uh, yeah, you can imagine I had a few frustrating moments. But I'm actually remembering this better than I thought I would. So uh, I'm quite happy with that, and you can see my uh, my navigation skills are uh, looking well. He looks a bit drunk, really, but th that's that's really the best way to navigate this uh, is to have a drunk Graham. So yeah, I mean King's Quest One. I mean this is probably for me. This is probably the first game I really played, um, and it sort of set off my enthusiasm for adventure and point and click games because I mean I went from here to other Sierra games and eventually like to Monkey Island and other LucasArts games and. Uh, revolution software etc but uh, I think it, it's important to really go back and see how far the genre has come I mean what you're seeing here is a VGA graphics engine this is 16-bit graphics this is pretty basic stuff compared to what even the indie games we have of today um, but prior to this 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 actually is about I think the fourth or the fifth remake of this game um, which came out around 87 but when it first came out in 83, there was an EGA version, uh, which you're talking really, really old school stuff. Um, and I might actually try and dig that out so I can really show you how old this game looks and how much of a massive improvement this was at the time uh, compared to what it originally was. And and subsequently now, recently, about 2001, 2002, there was actually another remake of this, a, a re remake of the VGA, uh, which again looks fantastic. And uh, again, it, it might be worth... You know, me, me doing a video of that to show you exactly how far that's come, or you've to search it up for yourselves. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, Sierra. This is basically the last thing Sierra published in terms of King's Quest. That they, they, this was the definitive edition as far as they were concerned. Um, so this is the official release, which you can buy on Good Old Games, or you can you can find on other sites as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, or oh, you can download, of course, the free version from AGD, which it, which is a very, it's a, it's a lot better, um, and it's free, of course, so you can you can experience it that way. Uh, but if you want to see this version, as you see now, it's it's it's, you know, you have to purchase it from GOG or as part of the King's Quest collection. But yeah, I mean, you can see the graphics are, are quite, <laughs> it's quite quite a change, really. But I'd say that typing in commands was a big deal at the time. Um, you know, and I, I guess for me, this this actually when I was a lot younger helped me with my spelling, um, and my kind of coordination skills, which are not very good now because I have balance issues. But we won't go into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it it was just a lot of fun to play, and it may not seem it now compared to the games that we see today. But 
yeah, I had a lot of fun with King's Quest. Um, but interestingly as well, I mean, the game is released on uh, on the Master System, which I've never actually experienced it on the Master System, so I might actually search it out myself. But uh, it, it apparently used a sort of a more um, native LucasArts kind of point-and-click verb style, which you'd be used to, so it's like, you know, give such and such to this person rather than having to type it all in. Um, and there were some differences in the gameplay as well. But, I mean, what I found amazing about King's Quest more than anything else is that this is one of the first games to really create a world. I mean, Daventry was its own unique location. And, you know, you, you had this this would-be king, Graham, who's, who's, who's the greatest knight in Daventry, and he, he wants to become the king, but in order to do that, he has to... Um, he's helping a, the dying king by retrieving these free treasures. So, basically, the quest and the intention of the game was to locate uh, the ma magic mirror, um, which you know, which you, you find in uh, in strange places, you, and you confront dragon, um, you you confront leprechauns and giants and all sorts of things as you as you as you go along to get that. Um, but in order to get those free treasures, then uh, that that would prove your, your your worthiness for the throne. So there's a lot of a lot of fantasy here, and obviously the the, the story expanded quite considerably. Oh, <laughs> I made a mistake there. I actually uh, fed the carrot to the goat. I'm actually supposed to show the carrot to the goat. Uh, it's a, what I'm supposed to do. I'm trying to sort of tempt him out of the gate, um, as there is a puzzle later on where you actually have to use the the goat on the troll. Is a quite an old fairy tale. Yeah, this this is another frustrating thing I find with this is that you have to be in exactly the right location to close things or exactly the right location to 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 to, to do certain actions. Uh, the game will not when you type it in the game will not automatically redirect Graham to where you need to be. So that that that's definitely something uh, an issue with the engine from way back when, and obviously that's something that's we we've you know we we've changed considerably, and uh, it is. You know, an expected part of game development these days. But back in the eighties, I mean, this is—I uh, don't know. This is well. This is a random pop-up within the game. Now, um, a lot of the old Sierra games had these random appearances. Now, we've been quite fortunate to now to have a, ra a random enemy appear. This is actually this go fairy godmother is going to give you a protective spell, um, so that you know you you can, which is used as part of a puzzle, but it also can help you against your enemies as well. So um, yeah, I mean. This is these these kind of things happen quite often in Sierra games, and they made the action quite dynamic. Um, and as you can see at the top of the screen there as well, there is there is a point system which would have been the original achievement system, I suppose. Um, within the games, there was a lot of optional things you could collect. There were a lot of optional puzzles which you could do. Um, there, of course, was the, the the normal story, and you could do the base amount to to finish the story and to complete the puzzles. And to do that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily get all the points, as there there are quite a few little hidden Easter eggs and things which you can discover. Um, you know, if you, if you, if you searched around enough, or if you did, you know, use a solution or something like that. But yeah, I mean, that that was another wonderful little thing about these games is that there was replayability in the sense that oh, I didn't get all the points. I'd like to go back and and try and find the you know, to, to try and get the rest of them and to try to discover how to do that. What did I miss? And I think that that was, for me, that was a real draw. Um, obviously, I was a big fan of, of action-adventure games back then, and, you know, I used to love all types of games as a kid, but I think adventure games really hooked me in because of that sense of discovery and, and, and looking around. And, you know, even looking... You're probably looking back at this and thinking, what, why, why, how could you find this interesting? This is Dulles Dishwater. And, you know, I guess it's just the era you come from, but, you know, it, it's nice to revisit this and to kind of, you know, share this with you guys who, who may not have seen a game like this. And just to show you how how far game development really has come and, uh, and, and how much game development today does owe to games like King's Quest. But, uh, well, here's hoping Sierra, now with Sierra of Return, that uh, we see more from this franchise in the future, however they, however they intend to, to, to give it to us. But uh, that, that's pretty much you know that's pretty much me done for this retrospective. Um, I've finally done the right thing and shown the, the character the goat, so he's going to follow me out of this gate now, which I seem to have a knack of uh, not being able to open properly. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope you'll come back soon.